Johnson's Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Silver McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. Now's the time to get your kitchen glowing with Glow Coat. Because now, Glow Coat gets your kitchen linoleum glowing brighter than it ever has. Yes, there's a new glow in Johnson's self-polishing floor wax Glow Coat. A brighter, glossier shine that shows up beautifully every time you apply Glow Coat to your linoleum. To see the new glow, just spread some Glow Coat on your kitchen linoleum and forget about it. Then come back to the kitchen in 20 minutes. You'll see that Glow Coat has produced a new, more beautiful luster without any help from you. It shines itself as it dries. As a result, the whole kitchen lights up, looks prettier. And it's easier to keep pretty, because that tough coat of glow coat protects your linoleum. And dust, dirt, and surface spots come right off that shining surface with a few strokes of the damp cloth. So ask your dealer for Johnson's Glow Coat. That's G-L-O-C-O-A-T. Glow Coat's got a new glow that gets your kitchen glowing. In the spring, a young man's lazy. He won't bestir himself at all, which is why he loafs all summer and starts his labors in the fall. (laughs) So here's the squire of Wistful Vista exhibiting his normal folly as he plants his lawn six months too late. But listen to Fibber McGee and Molly. My gosh, this ground has got a crust on it like a bride's first biscuit. (laughs) It seems to me to be a little late in the year to dig for fish worms anyway. My goodness, they'd have all built cocoons and turned into butterflies by this time. (laughs) I ain't digging for worms, Tootsie. I'm spading up the lawn to plant grass seed. Grass seed? In almost November? Isn't grass seed usually planted in the spring, dearie? Maybe, by guys that like bald-headed lawns. (laughs) <laughs> that the birds have ate all the seeds out of, but not by me, Tootsie. Besides, in the spring, I always get a case of fever that has me laid flat on my back in the hammock two weeks to lift the shovel. In the fall, I got plenty of pets. I see. <laughs> well, you'll need more than mere pep to turn that turf, dearie. You'll need an air hammer. That ground is packed down like a boarding house mattress. <laughs> Anyway, who ever heard of a farmer planting anything this time of the year? Why, Mrs. McGee, this is exactly the time when expert agriculturalists plant their winter wheat. (laughs) It is? For goodness sakes, how'd you learn so much about botany? Oh, well, you know me, widely read. (laughs) They even got a special chair for me at the public library. Really? Yes, sir. They say I'm one of the widest readers that comes in there. (laughs) I guess reading is almost as broadening as eating. (laughs) Well, what are your plans, sweetheart? You going to change that shovel for a pickaxe? Well, it's a cinch. I ain't going to get far with this thing. Look. It bounces. (laughs) It'd be a pretty tough job even if the ground were soft, wouldn't it? Nah, my gosh, the lawn is only 20 foot by 40 foot. That's 800 square foot. Three shovels full to the square foot. Now, let me see. Three times 800 is 2,400 shovels full to... 2,400 shovels. Well, 2,000... Ooh, wow. I got to think of a different way to dig this stuff up than... Well, hello there, kids. What's up? Well, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. <laughs> Hi, Oldtimer. What you doing with the shovel, Johnny? Well, the lawn is going to be dug up to plant grass seeds. <laughs> according to the king of spades here. Carter, anybody that'll plant grass seed this time of year ain't any king. He's a silly ace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, for your information, my ancient friend, I have forgotten more agriculture and more botany and more horticulture than I ever knew. How is that again, dearie? (laughs) I was just merely saying that of the three of us standing here, I'm the best authority on when to plant what and where. Well, now, Johnny, I don't know about that. I ever tell you about the time I was manager of a farm for a widow woman down in Mississippi? No, I don't believe you. Well, sir, spent some of the happiest days of my life down there. Ah, them hog jaws and harmony grits, that fat back and cracklings, 
Them black-eyed peas, that pot liquor and corn pone. <laughs> but memories. I can close my eyes right now and remember how I used to get up in the night with an indigestion that'd kill a grizzly bar. <laughs> How big was this lady's farm, Mr. Oldtimer? Well, daughter, sitting in the porch swing of the evening, I could get my arm clear around... Did you say farm or farm? <laughs> farm. A four-letter word meaning a hunk of land that if you get up early enough mornings and work late enough at night, it'll make you rich if you strike oil on it. <laughs> well, the farm I worked on was more what you might call a plantation, kids. Cotton and tobacco. Oh? Did you enjoy plantation life, Mr. Oldtimer? I don't think I'd like it. Them southerners are too hot-tempered. They run my cousin out of Norfolk, Virginia one night when he's playing Richard III on a showboat. What happened, Johnny? Well, he got careless with his sword and nicked the stagehand. The audience couldn't stand the sight of a Virginia ham slicing people. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> when I heard it, one fellow says, the telefeller says, says, Did you see the poster of Dewey and a detective and crewman walking into the polling place? No, says telefeller. What was that for? Well, says the first feller, the idea is to get every Tom, Dick, and Harry out to vote. <laughs> See you later, kids. The King's Men and Lavender Blue. Great grandfather met great grandmother when she was a shy young miss. Great grandfather won great grandmother. Street. 
Yes. There are no car tracks on 14th Street. Well, they can always convert it into a lunch wagon. <laughs> Come on out, Snooky, and watch old Farmer McGee rip up the topsoil. All right. There. Oh, my, it's a pretty little thing, isn't it? Yeah, and just listen to her purr. I'll take a turn around the yard for you once. Oh, hold it, McGee. Here comes Dr. Gamble. You, who? Hello, Doctor. Oh, hi, Doc. Well, hello there, Molly. Hello, plowboy. Hi. What do you think you're doing on that agricultural hot rod? <laughs> He's going to dig up the front yard and plant grass seed, Doctor, he says. Now, that is what I call a typical McGee project. Whoever suggested planting a lawn at this time of year, city yokel? Why don't you wait till we have three feet of snow and make it really tough for yourself? <laughs> Look, plasma huckster. <laughs> You stick to planting people and let me plant the lawn. <laughs> In other words, Nosy, if somebody knows more about something than you do, let somebody do it. Now, don't be rude, Mickey. Well, Remember, the doctor raises roses as a hobby. Yeah. He ought to raise lilies. <laughs> he creates his own market for them. <laughs> I'll open an account for you, gutter snipe. <laughs> McGee says he's always too tired in the spring to plant a lawn, Doctor, so he's doing it in the fall while he has lots of pets, which you'll admit is a pretty reasonable argument. My dear, that loud little lump of fatty tissue and calcified cranial content to which you are so unfortunately married has yet to do, say, or think anything which I could consider reasonable. Ooh. And furthermore... Hey, he... now, just a darn minute there, Cy. <laughs> I know some things about you, too, but I don't go noising them around. How would you like it if I repeated what the medical journal said about you just last month? Heavenly days. What was that? Yeah. And where did you ever read a medical journal, McGee? Right in Doc's office, that's where. There was an article that said he was no doubt the greatest obstruction in state medical circles. <laughs> right there in black and white, it accused him. Pardon me, it didn't say obstruction. It said obstetrician. Hmm? <laughs> And why, why were you in my office that day? It was on account of my eyes. Every time I read something, the print kind of blurred. Couldn't make out the words. I the thought defense probably... rests. And another thing, Mickey. Well, I got to get back to work. I'll see you some more, Ducky. Yeah, so long, Hayseed. I'll be at my office if you need me, and I do mean when. Goodbye, Doctor. <laughs> days. Look at the man handle that tractor, and loving every minute of it, bouncing around like a celluloid ball on a park fountain. I wish I could... Oh, hello there, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Molly. What's going on here? Where's Fibber, and who's running that tractor? Well, A, the yard is being plowed up, B, on the tractor, and C, he is. Well, why didn't he... Why didn't he have somebody come in and... Oh! Hi, Junior, old kid. How do you like my new jalopy? This thing has got more power than a justice of the peace with three motor cop brothers. Yeah, very handsome hunk of machinery, pal. But what are you hey, doing? Hey, look what I dug up on the other side of the yard, Molly. Two mason jars full of rubber bands. What idiot would bury two jars full of rubber bands? I did. <laughs> During the war. <laughs> Didn't know when I'd be able to get any more, so I buried it. <laughs> <laughs> and he never could remember where he hid them. Yeah. Keep looking, dearie. Uh, maybe you'll stumble across those ten cans of anchovies. Oh, no. I found those two years ago when I was digging fish worms. Everything I buried is accounted for now. Except the trusses. <laughs> trusses? Trusses? Yes. He heard there were freezing trusses at midnight once in 1942. And he dashed out and bought 18 of them. <laughs> Laugh if you want to, but I cornered the local market. <laughs> Not very patriotic, I guess, but nobody can ever say I hoarded anything useful. <laughs> 
Hey, you want to run this tackler, Junior? No, thanks, pal. My cousin, Big Bulldozer Wilcox, got fractured in two places with one of those things. Oh, how terrible. What two places, Mr. Oh, Wilcox? The bank and the credit bureau. Oh. That was 1939, and he's still paying on his tractor. Where's he working now, Junior? He's my office boy. Oh. Answers the telephone and stuff. Like when somebody calls up and asks about Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, he tells them. You mean there are people who don't know about glow coat? Isn't that incredible? I don't believe it. Me either. I'll bet you could go to the Arctic Circle, march up to an Eskimo and say, Why are you blubbering, muckluck? And he'd say, Got no linoleum. No can use glow coat. <laughs> Chinese Eskimo. Oh. <laughs> well... <laughs> He could use glow coat on the paddle of his kayak. Oh, it certainly is strange to me, too, that everybody in the world doesn't know about the new glow in glow coat and how it has added ingredients that give an added luster to even worn and weary linoleum. Yes, and it... And how it makes floors coverings more impervious than ever to dust, dirt, and dampness. How the new glow coat with the new glow gives housewives a new leisure because it saves so much time. Yeah, that's right. I suppose you refer to how easy and simple it is to use glow coat, McGee, like the mere minutes it takes to dry... To a beautiful, protective luster. Yes, we always... That's what I meant, Tootsie. The new glow coat with the new glow... Hey, we're monopolizing the whole conversation. (laughs) And just in time. (laughs) What were you trying to say, Waxy? Golly, I don't know. I came over here for something, but I've forgotten what it was. (laughs) Maybe you'll remember next week, Mr. Wilcox. If I don't, I'll be back singing Give a Man a Horse He Can Ride in Chautauqua. (laughs) So long now. Was he really a singer in Chautauqua? Nobody knows. I've asked people who used to be connected with Chautauqua, and they just turn pale and walk away fast. <laughs> well, back to work. You want to ride, Molly? No, thank you. I'll just sit here on the steps out of the way. Oh, hello, Mr. Wimple. McGee, here's Mr. Wimple. Huh? Oh, oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. <laughs> Goodness, took the fenders off your car and painted it red, didn't you? No, no, that's the tractor he rented to plow up the yard, Mr. Wimple. And how have you been? Oh, just fine, Mrs. McGee, just dandy. Sweetie Face and I... Who, Wimp? Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife. <laughs> oh, yes, uh-huh. Sweetie Face and I spent the morning reading to each other. How nice. Very domestic. What were you reading, Wimp? I was reading her the grocery bill, and she was reading me the riot act. <laughs> Now, before I was married, I... I... Before I was married, I... Guy... Oh, Mr. Wimple, why, there are tears in your eyes. Yes. I always feel sentimental about the time before I was married. (laughs) That's when I was in a detective business. You, Wimp? You a detective? Oh, yes, indeedy. I was in partnership with a man named Snoop Witherspoon. Oh? We specialized in following people, and we were pretty good, too. You were, Mr. Wimple. Oh, yes, indeedy. Snoop used to pick them up at their homes and follow them to work. I'd pick them up when they left their offices and follow them all evening. Kind of split it up, huh? Yes. Snoop was the house trailer, and I was the five o'clock shadow. <laughs> But I don't want to keep you from your work, Mr. McGee. I just stopped in for a minute on my way home from the bird store. Well, you had better get busy, McGee. At that, it's getting late. Okay, watch how easy I handle this baby wimp. Like a bright kid with a new tricycle. All righty. <laughs> Looks like he got the plow blade caught on something, Mr. Wimple. What's the matter, dearie? I'm caught on a root or something. Must be a big one. Well, don't worry, this tractor's got power enough to drag it out. Come you know water, high water. Do it, Mr. McGee. Let's show that old root. You said it, kid. Watch this. And I guess you'll get the you-know-what from the water department. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and the 12th Street Rag.
front yard at last, kiddo. Plowed, harrowed, and planted. All we got to do now is wait till spring. Well, it won't seem like a long wait. We'll be busy till spring just cleaning up the damage. Yeah. My goodness, the hedge all mashed down. Look at my lilac bush ruined. Yeah. Front steps crushed. Water main broken. Yeah, I had a little trouble with Say, the... incidentally, huh? where were you when the men came to shut off that broken pipe anyhow? In the basement. <laughs> Behind the furnace. What'd they say? Well, I didn't get all of it, but the foreman said something about you must have a mighty powerful tractor. Oh, he did, eh? Yes. He said it would take an awfully big jerk to tear up that water pipe. <laughs> ah, he's sweet. They said they'd be back with the crew in the morning to put in a new water main. Well, they better be careful. That's all I got to say. If they start tramping around on this lawn after I spend all day planting my grass seed, I'll raise so much. Hello there, Latrivia. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, pull uh, the porch step and sit down. Oh, thank you, Mrs. McGee. Well, McGee, what are you building here? A swimming pool? I uh, know. I just planted a new lawn, Latriv. Drop around about uh, April the 1st and we'll play some croquet. Love to. If I can borrow some hip boots. Oh, it'll be dry before April. Say, uh, how does the election look by now, Mr. Mayor? Everything going well? Oh, yes, yes. I'm not worried. Newspapers have been sniping at me a little, trying to get my temper up, of course, but... I've been simply ignoring them. That's the way to do it, boy. Just keep calm like always. I shall. Yes, sir. I'm not answering their jibes at all. I'm just playing possum till after the election. Good for you. After a hard day at the city hall, I imagine you find a game like that pretty relaxing. <laughs> yes, I... A game? What game? Possum. How do you play possum, Latrib? I played ducky on the rock and puss in the corner and dog in the manger, but I never played possum. <laughs> I don't think you quite understand. Is it anything I... like run, sheep, run, your honor? I used to love those animal games. Uh, look, look. When I said I was playing possum, I merely used an old expression, playing possum. Yeah, you... That did not mean I was actually playing. I was not playing at all, understand? Oh. He probably means he was hunting possum. Oh. <laughs> My brothers used to hunt possum all the time. They never found anybody. Me they... too, and you're absolutely right, Latrib. When you say that's not playing, boy, that's work, boy, pounding through that brush. I, I didn't say anything about it. The way I did it, I'd take a shotgun, two dogs in the case of root beer, in the case of snake bite, and head for the hills, see? I but this there... has nothing to do with uh, playing... Well, next time you go possum hunting, take McGee with you. Oh, he'd love to. I am not hoeing gossip hunting. Possum <laughs> hunting. I pay possum. Oh. oh, now, for goodness sakes, Mr. Mayor, don't get so excited. After all, it's Yeah, just... you'll never get any possums being that noisy. <laughs> You've got to stalk a possum, a trip. I'll show you... I don't want to bark a stossum. Huh? Bark a blossom. Oh. Look, when I said I was playing posse, possum, I merely meant I was lowing lies. But I know. No. I never said I... You're the one that's always misconwording my screws. <laughs> Screw you remarks, my word. Every time I stake a simple maintenance, Make a sap of it. A single map. A little sap. A single map. A little skin. One. Five. Eight. McGee. Yes? I wonder if you could help us out at the city zoo this week. Our superintendent is having trouble getting the polar bears fed. Oh, I'd be glad to, Latrive. You short of help? No. We're short of meat. Okay. Oh, my. Isn't he an interesting conversationalist, McGee? Yeah, if you like small talk, but... I got no time to brood over Latrivia's shortcomings now, kiddo. Let's just sit here and dream about that broad sweep of beautiful green lawn we'll have next spring. Yeah. Twenty feet wide and hip deep all summer. <laughs> I'll get back what it costs to rent the tractor, just charging people a buck apiece to walk around in it with their bare feet. It will be nice to have some grass for change. You betcha. <laughs> the only grass we had last year grew through that crack in the front sidewalk. <laughs> It'll be different this year, all right. I must have planted five pounds of grass seed out here. I'm going to set me a lawn chair under that maple tree there. And... Hey, look. There goes Wallace Wimple coming back. Oh. What happened, Mr. Wimple? Get locked out again? No, I just now missed it, and I heard right back here. I left it on your front porch here. That's what, I... Mr. Wimple? My bag of bird seed. Huh? I bought a big bag of bird seed to trap a blue-bellied Baltimore barn owl, and... Oh, here it is. Oh, good. I thought for a minute... Oh, no, it isn't either. Hmm. This bag says grass seed. <laughs> I wonder 
what became of my bird seed. Was it in a brown paper bag, Wimp? Yes, it was, Mr. McGee. McGee? Yep, I guess I did. Hey, Wimp. Yes? Next spring, you won't have to go to the country to watch birds. Come over here and sit on the steps. We'll have a yard full. Don't forget, the new words are new glow. Yes, there's a new glow in Johnson's self-polishing floor wax glow coat. A glow that gives your kitchen linoleum a far brighter finish than before. Far brighter than before, and mind you, as easily as ever. Here's all you do to make your kitchen linoleum sparkle from border to border. Quickly apply Johnson's Glow Coat to your linoleum, then walk out of the kitchen for 20 minutes. When you come back, you'll see that Glow Coat has produced its own shine with no polishing, no help, no work from you. And while Glow Coat is drying to a brilliant finish, it's also forming a tough coat over your linoleum. So your linoleum is protected from dirt and spilled liquids. When it does get soiled, a quick stroke with a damp cloth whisks dirt right away. Get this tough linoleum coating with the bright new glow. Use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. G-L-O-C-O-A-T. Ask your dealer for glow coat tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, the community chess campaign is now on, and we'd like to ask your help. This is the one annual appeal which combines the most and the best of many, many worthy causes, such as baby clinics, hospitals, home services, and juvenile delinquency prevention. Your gifts to the community chest will be spread among the 12,000 and more Red Feather services, and with all these measures under one management, your money goes much farther because the administration of funds is screened and simplified. So please give as generously as you possibly can to your community chest. With all these services under one head, let's each of us see how much we can do with one heart. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Bill McGee and Molly are brought to you by the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Code,